I really find that I'm very much at home with the paintings I'm doing right now. I know enough about painting now to know how to make an interesting painting, make an exciting painting out of a very mundane subject, like a couple of trees on a river, you know, where you're not breaking a lot of new ground. But with all of the things that I've gone through in my life, it all comes out in your painting. Like, my art has come from the soul and, and from those experiences that happen along life's highway. Everything I paint, no matter what stage it's at, I want to treat it as though well it's finished. And I think that's where you, you're continuously adding layers of interest, but you're also adding layers of quality. You really have to be critical, and I have anyway, to be very critical of what I do and make sure that I'm putting my best work out there. I want mood in my work. I want it to sort of, rather than it to say something, I'm trying to um, maybe move people rather than sort of get them politically, you know, excited about something. You know, it's more about mood, color. I'm just really trying to get the emotion of what I saw when I was there. When I was 16, that's when I was really starting to mature as a painter. I knew I wanted to say some things, but I didn't really know how to do it. And I found painting just came fairly naturally to me. There was a lot of people killed in Northern Ireland. You know, there's things going on like really close to where I lived that were shocking, frightening, and you know, a lot of passion and a lot of hatred just seemed to come out of, for me anyway, come out of nowhere. And I really started to paint and I did a lot of paintings, but I really didn't think of myself as a political artist, but I was a political artist. I did a painting of a riot and painting of prisoners and things like that. And when I did those paintings, I wasn't trying to convince people of a political message, it was more this is what's going on in Northern Ireland uh, and shown it to them in a different way. My wife and I and our children were, were driving from my hometown of Banbridge to her hometown of Newry and uh, we were driving up towards there and we hit this really big traffic jam, didn't know what it was, and a police officer put his head in the car and says there's been a, a really bad bombing, some people have been killed and it was a, a really horrific scene. We really didn't want to be part of the violence in Northern Ireland. And I said, you know what, we've got to get out of this place. When I left Ireland and came to Canada, I found like I was just really lost. I really lost my direction as an artist. Um, you know, I started to sort of move towards what was going on in the new city that I was in. You know, I did a, a series of paintings here called Urban Mirage, which were more about Winnipeg and about, you know, the mean streets of Winnipeg. They were really hard, dark backgrounds with bright colours jumping out at you. And, you know, I felt they were very political paintings and I felt they were strong. You know, if I hadn't made those paintings, I couldn't be doing the work I'm doing right now. The personal tragedies that happen in anybody's life affect everybody, not just artists. We're not unique in that sense. But a, the, the biggest tragedy that's ever happened to, to me, to my family, a, is our daughter, Kathy, um, who was a really energetic, very positive, intelligent young woman. And like me, she was a visual artist, she was a dancer. Uh, we went on holidays to Northern Ireland to see her family and we found out that she had a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And, you know, when, when we lost Kathy, I just didn't have anything. I was just a shell. When I started painting again after losing Kathy, and I, I really felt, you know, that in some kind of way I was carrying on the work that she wouldn't be able to do. And through a series of, of steps, I really got back into painting a realistic, landscape painting. I really want these paintings to be timeless. I want them to have a, you know, almost a, a spirit within them that you, you get when you get, you turn your back on the city a little bit. I think it's very interesting that right in the middle of a big city, Winnipeg's a decent sized city, that you can find places along the rivers 
This has not been changed for hundreds and hundreds of years. These are the same trees that people canoed down one river to meet people from another river long before immigrants like me got here. The River City series came about through uh, my health. I had some health problems, I had cancer. So I had to have major surgery and I was in St. Boniface Hospital. But when I came right out of surgery, as soon as I came around, I started to draw. And when I was really down, I would draw myself and, you know, the Peter McConville version of Frida Kahlo, I guess. But I was also had to walk, so I would, I would walk down the hallway and there was a great view, this huge window, and your, my goal was to get to that goddamn window. And I could see that river, you know, I could see the forks. I don't know, it just gave me hope and it was something that I really gravitated towards. The one thing that really kept building in my mind for an idea was the city and the river, but that's where the series came from, uh, it was the fact that I was very sick. I saw hope through that window and I saw something I wanted and I was determined I was going to get back out there and do it again. These landscapes are not light paintings. There's a lot of a uh, hope in them. If you don't know what it's like to pick yourself up after being knocked down to the ground a couple of times and get back into the game of life, that's what made these paintings. It's just basically that I wanted to be a celebration of life.